Alrighty, hello, how's it going? So in the previous video, we got some layers working. We got the gun and the world on individual layers. And both of these layers had to be rendered before they were composited together, but otherwise there was no particular dependence one way or the other. In this video, I'm going to run through a case where we do have dependence. <clears throat> we want a view of the world before we come to render the gun. And we're basically going to turn this gun into a cool sort of glass material. So let's have some fun with it. Be surprised how simple this method actually is. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to the shaders and we're going to modify these. We're going to make a fragment shader specifically for the gun. And we're also going to simplify this quite a bit. So the data which is passed out by the vertex shader for the gun is pretty much just going to be the position, the clip space, screen space position, and the texture coordinate. We don't need all this extra data. All this stuff is going to happen in the vertex shader. So I'll just get this out of the way. This is our gun fragment payload. Then we can go down to the vertex shader and we can say, okay, vertex shader, you are going to return one of these things. And I'll just have a look through here. Vertex, yep, model, that's fine. The camera's fine. We just don't need a material ID anymore because our material is going to be the world layer. Okay, so just a little bit of work here. We can get rid of all this data. And now instead of a world pause, I'm going to define, I'll call it, it doesn't matter at all, just call it screen pause. And this will basically be the clip space position of the vertex. So we'll do all of the transformation to get it from model space into world space, then into view space, and then into clip space or projection space, whatever you want to call it. We can go ahead and pass this through. And then I'm going to, based on the position, basically the position on the screen will be the position of the screen that we sample. I hope that makes sense. But long story short, we just take wherever we're about to draw that corner. And then we want to draw the material, which is immediately underneath it, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to make some coordinates. I'm going to take for instance, the X position of the screen, and then do perspective division. So divide it by its depth. And then this will give me something which is clip space. It goes from negative one to positive one. And then to normalize that into the range zero to one, I will just add on one to get it from zero to two and then halve it. And I will do the same thing for Y. Yeah, why not? Just like that. And then for the texture coordinate that I'm putting out, I'm going to form those together. Why can I not type today? Now, I am going to need to make a new fragment shader because this fragment shader here is doing too much. It's doing all this lighting and stuff. It's going to be way simpler. So I'm just going to copy paste this function and I'll call it fragment shader gun keep it simple. Now, we do not have an array of textures, we just have a single layer that we rendered to. And to make this super clear, I'll call this world texture. Okay, and we don't need any of this stuff. Light data, we don't need it. Okay. So watch how extreme this simplification is going to go. We are going to do precisely zero lighting. And I'm just going to return whatever that material says. Now, if I've done everything properly, this will appear as a no op. So just to make it super clear, I'm going to tint the world with red, just so I can see exactly how my sampler is working. There we have it. How simple is that? What I'll do now is I'll go to my renderer and I'll need to, of course, tell it which of those entry points to use. 
So I'll just go down to where I'm making the gun pipeline and tell it to use that fragment shader gun. Okay, and then I'll go down to the gun model, gun drawing stuff, and then here where I'm setting my texture, I'll get the world layer. And I was calling that color buffer, I believe. Yep. And then what was the world layer color buffer sampler? Okay. Now I think this will work, but just for simplicity, I will say, okay, we probably need this stuff, but then camera data. Yeah, we need that, but light data. Nope. And we also don't need the material ID. There we go. Okay. So I'll just give that a shot. Now, if you can see this, for instance, if I look here, we can see that, yeah, we can see the world, but classic scenario, right? It's, it's mirrored. And I intentionally did this because there's nothing wrong with just running something in and seeing what happens. So I'll just go back to my shaders and I will flip around the Y of the texture coordinates. Awesome. And see how this is just an identity operation. We're just picking up the material, which was sitting already rendered. And for these exact positions, we're sampling the material there. Okay. So this is fine and this is good, but see how it looks a little bit flat. Like it's not really doing anything. We've got these normals and what I'm thinking is let's take these normals and add them to the texture coordinates. So if a normal is facing directly at the camera, it will not warp the texture coordinate, but if it has an X or Y component that will add onto the texture coordinate and it'll push the texture coordinate a little bit. So we'll go back to the shader and then right under here, let's get the normal. And we're pretty much going to do the same thing, but we're going to multiply this by, we're going to send through the normal vector. So that gets transformed into screen space. Screen position is output here, and then we'll warp it. So we'll say screen position is screen position plus normal. See what happens. Okay. So looking at this, this is definitely curving things. It's sort of, see, we get sort of a natural scope effect on this Mickey Mouse, because in this region here, the normals are curved, but sort of straight on. Anyway, if we don't like this effect, what we can do is just go back to the code and dial this back a little bit. So we turn down the warping effect of the normal vector, then we get a much more subtle effect. This can look a little off in screenshots, but when you're sort of running through in a gameplay scenario, it might look a little better. Um, and yeah, just play around with it, get some different effects. So that will be it for today. Hope you had fun. Super short one. And yeah. Have a good one. Bye. Hi. So I just wanted to take a second to say thank you to all of my channel supporters. If you would like to support the channel, it's $2.50 a month. That's all I ask, but it's not expected. If you are not able or willing to support the channel financially, the best thing you can do is the usual like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you'd like to see. Let me know what you're enjoying because I am trying to make the best educational content that I can under the constraints. So with that out of the way, really big thank you to Antonin Karet, Dankiel Foles, Declan, Andalon Studios, Isaiah Meyer, Mathieu Derick, Moim, and Shreya. Thank you so much, my dudes. I really do appreciate it. It's fuel for the fire. Keep me going, keep me motivated. Um, but yeah, have a great one, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.